up to this point, we thank you and praise you and celebrate with you and all of the heavenly host the decisions made by Brian and Anna and Kevin to seal their lives through baptism with you and to be born again, born of water and the Spirit. We pray for their spiritual walks. We pray for strength. We, sp we pray for you to keep them in your care. May your angels be always round about them to protect them. May your Holy Spirit continue to speak to their hearts. And now, Father, as we open your word, we ask you to open our minds. Help us to understand the message that you have for us today. For we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, I invite you to open your Bibles or to get your phones out or tablets or whatever you have that has the Word of God in it. Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, we're going to be reading verses 1 through 7. Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, and I am reading out of my favorite translation, the New American Standard Bible, a gift from my friend Dick. Thank you, Dick. I, I've been making good use of this Bible. This is my study Bible and my preaching Bible and my all-around Bible. So let's go to Gospel of Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, and we read like this. Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinus was governor of Syria. And everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Verse 4, Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the family of David, and so was Mary, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While they were there at Bethlehem, the days were completed for her to give birth. Verse 7 reads like this. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger. Why? Because there was no room for them at the inn. There was no room at the inn. People were living their ordinary lives. They were eating and drinking and being married and somehow missed it. They missed the awaited Messiah. The signs were there. The prophecies pointed to Jesus' coming. That even Gentile wise men realized it, but his people did not have room, neither at the inn nor in their hearts for Jesus. The prophet Micah prophesied that Jesus would come from Bethlehem and that he was from everlasting the prophet Isaiah foretold that he, Jesus, would be born of a virgin and that he would be called Emmanuel, which we find out in the New Testament has translated God with us. And the prophet Daniel even went as far as giving them a prophetic timeline of his coming. Jesus' birth should had never been missed. His birth fulfilled all of the Old Testament prophecies concerning 
the Messiah to the letter. We are told in the scriptures that he did not come at a random time, but he came at God's ordained time. He came at the perfect time. And people should have been ready for his coming. In Galatians, book of Galatians, go with me to Galatians, chapter 4 and verse 4. It tells us exactly that. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4 tells us exactly what we are talking about. And it reads like this, but when the fullness, Galatians chapter 4 verse 4, when the fullness of time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, verse 5, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. At the fullness of time, Jesus came. At the exact time, Jesus came. He did not come late. He did not come too early. He came at the exact time, the fullness of time. God sent his son. His birth was not at random, but it was planned from eternity. People should have been waiting for Jesus' coming with banners and balloons and party hats and cake. They should have been a celebration for the King of kings and Lord of lords. But we are told that there was no room at the inn for him. In the Gospel of Matthew, go with me to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 2. Gospel of Matthew chapter 2. Let's read verses 1 through 3. It says, Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, Magi from the east, notice that they were not from within his people, these were foreigners, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? How come foreigners realized it? How come people from outside of God's people realized it? We need to take note, friends, that this will happen again. We need to take note and be warned that this will happen again. That history repeats itself and that just as in the days of Jesus when he was born in the days of Herod the king and people didn't realize that he was born, that he had come for the first time, so in the last days people will be drinking and eating and being married and completely miss the clear signs that we find in the Holy Scriptures about him. Verse 3, when Herod the king heard this, that, that there was a king born within his city, he said, he, first of all, he was troubled, it says, and all Jerusalem was troubled. How can this be? How can this be? Verse 7, let's skip to verse 7. Then Herod secretly called the Magi and determined from them, imagine the king of the Jews, the king from, from the people of God, the ones that should know better, were asking foreigners to explain to them prophecy. The ones from outside the church, 
knew more about the coming of the Lord than those inside the church. Then Herod secretly called the Magi and determined from them the exact time the star appeared. Verse 8, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child, and when you have found him, report to me, so that I too may come and worship him. False. He wanted to kill him. Verses 10 through 12 reads like this. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. After coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell to the ground and they worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they presented to Jesus gifts of gold, frank incense, and myrrh. And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, because of his murderous ways, the Magi left for their own country by another way. Even in the time of Jesus' birth, not only was there no room at the inn, there was also no room in the palace. A king? How can there be two kings? There was no room for Jesus. But, interestingly, there was room in the hearts of foreigners, wise men from the east, but not in the heart of his people. In the Gospel of John, I ask you to go with me to the Gospel of John chapter 1. Gospel of John chapter 1. We're going to read verses 10 and 11. Gospel of John chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. It confirms exactly this. It reads like this. He was talking about Jesus. Jesus was in the world, and the world was made through Jesus. However, the world did not know Jesus. Jesus came to this world. He came for a purpose. He came to, to save the lost. He came to give all of us an opportunity at life and life eternal. And yet, when he came to the world, even though that he was the creator of the worlds, the creator of the universe, they did not recognize him. Verse 11, he came to his own, to his own people, the children of God, and those who were his own, the Bible says, did not receive him. His own people were unwilling to accept him. Like we have mentioned, they had the prophecies, they had the scriptures, they had the great teachers of the law, they knew everything about his coming, and yet they were not ready to receive him when he came. Jesus was often rejected by his own people, the so-called children of God, the God of the universe, the creator of the world, came to his own, and his own did not recognize him. Well had the prophet Isaiah prophesied that this would happen. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. It's important for the Word of God to explain itself. It's important that when we read the Scriptures, we allow the Scriptures to give us understanding. If it is not in the Scriptures, then we should not believe it. But if it is 
in the scriptures, then behold, we need to believe it and accept it. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3 reads like this. Listen, he was despised, talking about Jesus, he was despised and forsaken of men. He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And like one from whom men, they hid their faces from Jesus. He was despised, and we, the people, did not esteem him. Listen to the words used to describe the world's reaction to Jesus. Because it's very easy to talk about this rosy, beautiful picture of Christmas. It's very easy to only, you know, think about Jesus once a year and, you know, set up a manger. It's very easy to go through the motions. However, the scriptures are clear that when, when Jesus came, this is how he was received. This is how the King of Kings and Lord of Lords was received. And oftentimes, this is how He is received today. The Scriptures tell us that Jesus was despised. That people hid their faces from Him. That no one esteemed him. This is Jesus, the Savior of the world who was born in Bethlehem, whom shepherds saw, whom, whom wise men worshipped, who was born in that manger. Today we paint a pretty story, but the truth is that he was despised and forsaken. The truth is that he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. If the only time that we remember Jesus is during the Christmas season, we too partake of the sins of his people. We reject Jesus, we despise Jesus, we cause him grief, and there is no room for Jesus at the end of our hearts. Will we once again be too busy with parties, with gifts, with traditions of men, that we will once again leave Jesus on the outside? That we will once again allow Jesus to remain on the outside, at the door, knocking, calling us, pleading for us to open the door. That is the picture that we find, after all, in Revelation. And this is our last passage of Scripture. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Joseph and Mary were knocking at many doors. They were knocking, please, let us in. Can you see that my wife is pregnant? Can, she's about to give birth. Besides that, uh, an angel appeared to us, and, and we were told that this is the Messiah. This is the King of Kings. Imagine if that had happened. And people saying to them, you are crazy, get out. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll give you this manger here for a good price. Just don't scare the animals and don't, don't come knocking. We're busy tonight, we're having a nice family meal and uh, just go have your child over there. Don't get it dirty. Go have your child over there. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand 
at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and I will dine with him and he with me. Is there room for Jesus in our hearts? Is there room for Jesus in our homes? Is there room for Jesus in our church? Is there room for Jesus in all of our holiday plans? Or is Jesus is simply a memory? Something that happened but does not affect us in any way, shape, or form. I am relieved that at least three people today decided to open their hearts to Jesus and to say, come in. Come in and stay in my heart and be part of my life. But what about the rest of us? What about the rest of us? Is there... room for Jesus in our hearts. If you want to say, Jesus, I need you in my heart. Yes, it is true that at times I have been busy. Yes, it, is, it is true that at times I have forgotten all about you. In our hearts, Lord Jesus. I also would like to make a, another call. All the way. Meaning that you are willing to take the step that these three individuals took today. Meaning that you want to study the scriptures, that you want to know more perhaps. And that perhaps you are needed or wanting or wanting to know more. Or perhaps you realize that you were wrong. Or perhaps you want to recommit your life to the Lord. I would ask you to step out. come forward. Anyone else who would like to come forward? Anyone else who has not been baptized and who wants to partake? and 
for hundreds of, sin of holy people. Allow us to be receptacles that are willing to host you. Allow us to be willing to uh, say, please come in and stay. Be a permanent resident in our hearts. Forgive us, Father, for the many times in which we have forgotten all about you. Allow this Christmas season not to be the same. And Father, I also want to pray over my sister, Tasha. I want to ask you, Lord, to keep her within your protection. Allow this decision that she has made today to be a lasting decision. Allow this decision to be a decision that leads her to renounce the world and to accept you with all of her heart. And one day soon, Father, we look forward to that day when once again, as today, we witness the baptism of another sinner who has found repentance and forgiveness and salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. We are going to have a last song. I'm going to invite those in charge to come up and lead us in song. And just to remind you, we do have food prepared for you, and we don't want to eat it all by ourselves. So. Please do make plans to stay and eat with us. Please stand with us one last time here this morning as we join together in a familiar seasonal favorite, Silent Night. <laughs> 